my father taught me many things in words and deeds. When I say this, I don't mean just the copyable ones, but also things I know I am flawed at and will have to actively work against. I watched a video of a preacher who was talking about how husbands should conduct themselves around their wives. And though it had some plausible comments and I may have missed the whole sermon, I thought to reiterate his omission from the whole counsel of God. See Acts chapter 20 verse 27. Now some preachers were they rulers will not build women prisons, exonerating women at every turn. The Bible is clear about the duties on both parties without exemption, and to elaborate love unfailingly. When we analyze love here, see 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 8, we see we can't manufacture it. Whether it is love for each other or an inanimate object, it is there, then we feed it, and it grows into something beautiful, amazing, or grotesque and ugly to behold. See 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Love with denial of self. He that will follow me, said Christ, let him deny himself and take up his cross. See Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Do you deny this cross? And I don't mean the salvation one, but the sanctification one, the cross of shun, abuse, ridicule, loss of favor, as you affirm and proclaim him, of freedom, of liberty, or loved one. Our wives and houses they may take, saith Luther, in that hymn, a safe stronghold our God is still. Love like Christ for his church, this should have come first, sacrificial, devotional, caring, and visible in actions and deeds and words. He died for it. Are we ready to die for ourselves, especially spouses? Or do we go around denigrating and backbiting one another? We must seek to work in honor of this love. See Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. To cherish and obey all the dictates that God gave in his word for it. And as a preacher said, it is onerous or hard when there is nothing there. No prayer. Thankfulness for that precious feeling, rare and admired or envied, depending on who is looking. No work there. We cease working and give attention to other things. We claim faithfulness, but the heart is already gone. We are hypocrites to ourselves and the world at large. See 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 9. We must return to that foundational experience that we had at the beginning. We are lost otherwise and cannot thrive in anything if the heart is cold. As I made breakfast this morning, I recalled that many times we had to scrape from leftovers during some periods of my youth and teenage years. On one occasion, my brother wouldn't comply and was given some money, which I am sure meant my father had to walk some distance because it was his transport money to work. Now, these have been a good educational background for me over the years and, well, a lesson on life's transiency, that nothing is constant or permanent. So, we must stay faithful, keep personal matters at home. If ministerial fruits are slim or life is constraining, we bear and pray and wait until the Lord himself provides refreshing. See Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Christ was not rich, so predominantly we remain or ensure we live meagerly. With food and raiment we content be see 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 8. We are to give to the poor without restriction, not judge ourselves by looks, braids. We look and braid, yes, but that shouldn't be primary for us. See 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 3. It is the progress and spread of the word that is paramount. When was the last time we looked for news about the brethren? Yes, we have to look because it is not apparent and is covered by so much of the world. The U.S. election, the Israel and Gaza conflict, the Russia and Ukraine situation. It's all you hear, repeated and repeated. It's like a confirmation that the ruler of the world is the prince of the power of the air, as mentioned in Ephesians 2 verse 2. But, you know, we scarcely see anything about the believers. Save for some who unfailingly publish and provide us with the progress, the persecutions, the oppressions, the lacks, and the sidelining. And when we do hear about these, what do we do about it? Oh, we stay in our churches, that is good. And we attend to ministries there, that is even better. But is that all? It's localized. Go ye into the world, as said in Mark 16 verse 15, that great commission. Not just to London, Lagos, or Laos, but the world. Preach the gospel. Now, not all have the means to travel but your praying for the work, according to knowledge and of the situation, travels further than any jet made by man to God. Let us have the interest of our local and international brethren at heart looking for news. 
Another viewpoint is that often a pastor who would resolve his marital matters in the pulpit to the detriment of the rest of the congregation, that is so unwholesome, meaning there is definitely a burning of works waiting for such when our Lord comes. See 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 15. You have attained a high post, remember the congregation who languish at the tongue of their dissatisfied and restless spouses. For when you teach that to elevate your status at home, you leave some with a huge problem as they are now at the mercy of their other half who have taken your words as gospel and act these out in their homes. For example, you extol your wives' achievements at the expense of those whose wives haven't any to speak of, or you refrain from preaching the roles in the home, see Titus chapter 2 verses 5 to 6, or you bring culture into mainstream when it should be a deferent observation, see Romans chapter 13 verse 7. The pastor is to stick to the word, not self-accolade, whether in or out of season. If the wife will give you a hard time, you have to take it as a good soldier of Christ. In our libertine days, we need to remind the church of the role of men and women, to teach at home, to listen, to love, and to obey. It is no use a church pandering to the world when it should be an example in all things. Anyone who refuses to heed the word is to be regarded a heathen, see 1 Corinthians 16, 22, not elevated or left in the work of the Lord, and we wonder why our ministries suffer and fewer are attracted to our lukewarm stance that the Lord himself promised to spew out of his mouth, see Revelation 3, 16, are you lean in the receipt of affection department or bad-mouthed because you serve a right? We recall the Lord saying the world hated him and they will hate us too, see John 15:18. Sadly, when severely backslidden, Christians act like the world here, persecuting the brethren and some do this all their lives. What a shame. Pastors are to teach and lead the church along those lines, not let their speech differ from God's dictate. It is so easy to be drawn into the world and its ways, see Hebrews 12.1. I heard a church offering family guidance and even published this as an activity on their forum. No, some other offer giving creed about home, society, aiming to become notable in the world. Nay, we decrease and proffer Christ's increase. We burn no strange fire at the Maker's altar, but that incense and oil and stoker that he specifically asks of us. See Isaiah 1.13. So, a quick reminder of what we ought to teach specifically on marriage. 1. Learn at home. 2. Keep your home. 3. Care for your home. Love your spouse. 4. Divorce rarely except for adultery. 5 dissatisfied or AWOL wife, return to your husband. A woman I know was loudly and publicly denouncing her husband on a particular matter. And you know the good elderly women gently berated her, saying to feed him well, then he will have strength and she should stop complaining. I have another video or videos on the subject if you care to listen. The men are berated enough, so no need for me to add more here. Love your wives. So is it the pastor only to spread and teach? Nay, we are all teachers in a way, in our family circles, amongst friends, colleagues. We seize the moment, we slip in a word here, a verse there, a sermon, a parable, when and where we can. Friends, I don't speak for all, but we have wasted enough time. Well said scripture that we redeem the time for implying that we've not actively and with our whole being proclaimed the truth and we must start now now is the time see ephesians 5 16 colossians 4 5 there is not a moment to spare in the words of well-known preachers sinners are dying hell is filling up yes in the last days perilous times shall come but we are here and we are his what is stopping us why are we so silent why don't we speak of him? Are we afraid? Fear not, little flock. Yes, the world seems big and daunting, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. See Luke 12:32. A kingdom, friends, a kingdom is ours. Are we lazy? Then nobody achieves anything in this world with laziness. In fact, we lose all we've had, whether inherited or earned, when we become lazy. So, the choice is yours. Are we doubtful of the outcome that they will shun and not listen? Are we so backslidden that we distrust the power of the Lord? He is conquering, see Revelation 6 verse 2. 
He will bring souls in, so we'd better buckle up and join the fray. Add our weight to that tug of war. Call the sinner, they will hear by his power. Yes, yes, you have a corporate ministry, but we all need a private one too. Yes, it is hard, but Christ promised us no less. Narrow is the way and straight is the gate. Only the worldlings are on the broad road, go through the wide gate. See Matthew 7 verse 14. The famous analogy of the church is that of the bride and Christ's groom. See Isaiah 62 verse 5, Revelation 21 verse 9. This is outed here to maintain this and remind us that if a person loves not the physical being, they're in the same world, they cannot and do not love Christ, nor are his. Let us not deceive ourselves. See 1 John 4 verse 20. The anathema maranatha is hauled at the persistently disobedient who ignore those core things that actually confirm the faith. Like the house on the sand, it will crash in the end no matter how long it stands. 10, 20, 30, 40 years. The requirements by the Lord of Christians and marrieds are the same as stated above, therefore the two themes here. It is no wonder the world has gone lost its way on this matter. There is a country with 94% divorce rate and you may say, yeah, maybe most of those are repeat offenders. Still, it is high. Those who are married constantly commit adultery. The unmarried constantly and blatantly fornicate. Innuendos abound everywhere we look. Is this once named amongst us, his people? Shouldn't we by nature be exempt, for we are new creatures, born anew, which is why we are reminded, not even commanded, that it should not be once named amongst us. See Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. Then we expect the church to thrive in such an environment. And well said Christ, that we be careful to be unspotted from the world. We take heed lest we think we stand, but alas, our actions, mind, thoughts, and deeds betray us. See 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. No wonder our churches hardly differ from the world, and by our actions in the church we confirm so in our decisions and deceptions, thinking ourselves well commended by the Lord. To sanitize our society, we must begin with the gospel. See Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. There is no other way. Sports, well-being, making merchandise of us, houses are being built to accommodate the splitting families. There are umpteen devices and technologies that cater to the survival of singles, microwaves, bottle cap opening scissors, cars with power steering, microwave meals, sandwiches, prepacked salad, restaurants and takeaways, the list is endless. And naturally, the church, consisting of those who believe, ought to manifest characteristics of the full rebirth. And for growth, teach the word unfailingly ensuring the same standard is applied in the church's actions. See Revelation chapter 2 verses 1, 8, 12, 18, chapter 3 verses 1, 7, 14. Prayerfully for who is sufficient for these things. See 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16. The hymn A Safe Stronghold Our God is still follows next. Across the ship and well, he'll help us clear from all the ill. The heart was not overtaken. The ancient prince of hell, raising a postman, strong made of. Rough and hard, he were in this heart. On earth is not his bed. If horse of arms be not in time, for soon were we down with. Oh, 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 fights the proper man, whom God himself hath been. 
as he who is the same. Christ Jesus is his name, the Lord Sabbath Son, he and no other one, shall conquer in the And were this world, O devil, I watch into the We lay it not to heart so sore, nor they can overpass. And let the prince of him. Look green as a he will, he arms are not aware, for why his doom is with. A word shall quickly slay. Cause work for all the Craft and first, one moment will not be A spite of hell shall have its course, tis written by his feet. And though they take a life, good. On a children why yet is the prophet small this thing shall banish all the city of God remains.